So now, at a kind of moment of great cultural challenge and dynamic for Western civilization, which has for a thousand years called all the shots and shoved itself down everybody's throat, whether they liked it or not, in the last hundred years, through the science of anthropology and ethnography and ethnomedicine and botany, the news has arrived that these quote-unquote primitive people are in fact master technicians of journeying into a world of the neurological imagination, a world we didn't even know exist, a world that is as distant to us as the world at the heart of the atom is from the rainforest fishermen. And because our own cultural values seem a little shoddy at this moment, those on the fringes of Western civilization have begun to seek alternatives, begun to look at uh, alternative religions, yoga, tantra, Buddhism, Zen, whatever, uh, alternative approaches to diet, vegetarianism, macrobiotics, so forth and so on, and alternative approaches to authentic experience, which means psychedelics. Uh, in the early stage of psychedelic involvement, everyone was sort of flying under the banner of uh, hands-on Freudianism or hands-on Jungianism. You know, we're going to see those archetypes. We're going to confront those sexual repressions. We're going to journey into those traumatic childhood memories. N now, it's understood, I think, that those metaphors were fairly inadequate and that actually we stand on the brink of an unexplored landscape of planetary size. The world of the high Paleolithic, which is a Gaian world, a world of feeling, not analytical intellectual constructs, but a world of empowered feeling, empathy, and intuitive understanding, an understanding that doesn't arise in a context of Greek logic, but in a context of animal knowing in the authentic mode of the body. So, just to bring it all around here, the great exhibit which we must always keep in front of ourselves and our critics is the mystery of the human mind and body. No one knows how it is that I can command my hand to make a fist and that it will do that. I mean, that's mind over matter. That's the violation of every scientific principle in the books. And yet it is the most trivial experience any of us have. We expect to command our body. We expect the mental will to order the monkey flesh into action and it will follow. The body is the nexus of the mystery of life. And our culture takes us out of the body and sells our loyalty into political systems, into religions, into inanimate objects and machines, collections, so forth and so on. Uh, the felt experience of the body is what the psychedelics are handing back to us. That's why it's called escape. Because it's escape from HBO, from walking the mall, from seeing what's on the tube, from consuming trash media. It's escape from all of that into the authenticity of the body. This is why sexuality is so mm, edgy in this society. They'd make it illegal if they but could figure out how. It's, it's the one drug they can't tear from our grip, and so they lay a guilt trip about it. But sexuality and psychedelics, by carrying us back to an authentic sense of the body, carry us back to the domain of authentic values. 
And more and more the message that people are getting as they avail themselves of the psychedelic experience is that it is not a journey into the human unconscious or into the ghost bardos of our chaotic civilization. It's a journey into the presence of the Gaian mind that the earth is a coherent whole. It is a thinking, feeling, intending being that in terms of our value structures, it would be foolish to image as anything other than female. And when cultural values created by male dominance and science and linearity and so forth and so on, when those values are dissolved, what is waiting there is this incredibly poignant experience of matrix, what James Joyce called the mama matrix most mysterious. Nothing more than our bodies and the earth out of which our bodies came. History, as we have lived it in the West, has been a turning of our back on that. And now history has failed. Western cultural institutions, having become global cultural institutions, now show themselves to be adequate to inspire, lead, or carry anyone into a future worth living in. At this moment, then, this reconnecting to the Gaian mind becomes a kind of moral imperative. So this whole drug issue is not an issue even about criminal syndicates or about untaxed billions or about the mental health of our youth or any of that malarkey. I mean, my God, the most destructive drugs known to the species are peddled on every street corner without restriction. The real issue is what kind of mental worlds shall people inhabit? What kinds of hope shall be permitted? What kind of value systems shall be allowed? And the value systems that aggrandize the possession of things, the tearing up of the earth, competition, classism, racism, sexism, have led us to the brink of catastrophe. Now, I think we have to abandon cultural Western cultural values and return to the deeper wisdom of the body in connection with the plants. That's the seamless web that leads us back into the heart of nature. And if we can do this, then this very narrow neck of cultural crisis can be navigated. Very little of the past can be saved. Uh, the architectonics, the machines, the systems of monetary exchange and propaganda, the silly religions, the asinine aesthetic canons, very little of that can be saved. But what can be saved is the sense of love and caring and mutuality that we all uh, put into and take from the human enterprise. You know, there's a Grateful Dead song that says, you can't go back and you can't stand still. If the thunder don't get you, then the lightning will. And we now hold, through the possession of these psychedelics, catalysts for the human imagination of sufficient power that if we use them, we can deconstruct the lethal vehicle that is carrying us toward the brink of apocalypse. We can deconstruct that vehicle and redesign it into a kind of starship that would carry us and our children out into the broad starry galaxy we know to be waiting us. But it's a cultural test. Nature is pitiless. Intelligence is a grand experiment upon which a great deal has been risked. But if it proves inadequate, nature will cover it over with the 
same kind of cool impunity that she covered over the dinosaurs and the trilobites and the crossopterygian fishes and all those other folks who came before. So what we must do, I think, is see our future in the imagination, catalyze the imagination, form symbiotic relationships with the plants, affirm archaic values, and spread the good news that what is out of control, what is in fact dying, is a world that had become too top-heavy with its own hubris, too bent by its own false value systems and too dehumanized to care about what happened to its own children. So I say good riddance to it. Bring on the archaic revival and let's create a new world. And that's it. And 